Hi, in this video, we'll be exploring some of the video editing features inside of Mixcraft. Mixcraft offers many powerful video editing tools that you can use to edit your videos, use Mixcraft for post-production sound work, or use it to overdub videos for voiceovers. Mixcraft allows you to add both videos and still images. Videos are accepted in AVI, WMV, and MP4 formats. Still images can be added in JPEG, PNG, BMP, or GIF formats. To begin editing videos, we'll go up to the top and select Add Track to add a video track to our project if you don't have one already. Next, let's drag in some still images and videos. Let's first begin by dragging in this still image here. You'll see that it's automatically been added, and much like audio, we can click and drag it to move it around in time. Now, let's grab a video file and drag this in as well. When you import a video file, the sound will be imported as well, and you'll see that these two items are linked. What this means is if we move the video file, the audio follows. Similarly, if we make a cut in the video, and then move forward and make another cut, then delete the segment we've cut out, you'll see that the audio that's linked is removed as well. With that said, you can use Mixcraft to edit your videos down. If you need to unlink the video and audio, you can use this button here, which is the Unlink Clip button. In this case, we can remove the audio from this video as there's no sound, and we'll be replacing it with our own. Now, let's bring in our custom audio we want to use for the video. Here I have my audio clip, so we'll drag this onto an audio track, and now we can begin editing this video together. To see our video as we edit it, we can click the Show Video Window button here. This will open the Video Preview window, which you can rescale to make it larger or smaller. In most cases, using a smaller window is good so it's not as taxing on your computer. Now let's drag this Video Preview window down so we can watch the video as we work. To begin, let's go to the start here and trim up the logo. Now we can drag our video clip back and sync them together. If we play this now, we'll see it transition from the image to the screen recording. And we'll need to trim up the screen recording video a bit. Let's move forward in time and find a point where we can begin the cut. Right about here looks good. To cut the video, we'll use Ctrl-T to split this clip and then delete the unused segment. Now let's drag this back to line it up. From here, we can drag our music back to sync things up a bit better. Now that we've got our audio and video together, let's watch it back and see what we've got so far. And let's say we want the video to end right about there. To end this in time with the beat, we can disable our snap to grid settings and then zoom in to perform a cut right at the end. Let's use our mouse wheel to zoom in and find the point we want to cut, which is right about here. Now we can click the video clip and hold Ctrl and click the audio clip. Then we'll use Ctrl T to split them both. And then we can remove the unused segments. Now let's zoom back out and see what we have so far. I think we're off to a good start. From here, let's add some text and effects to our video. To begin, let's add a nice crossfade between these clips. Mixcraft actually does this automatically, and all we need to do is drag these clips to overlap. Let's begin by going here where the two clips meet, and then we can click and drag to overlap these, and you'll see a crossfade indicator here. If we play this back, you'll see the two clips crossfade together. To make this transition a bit more interesting, let's add a couple quick video effects. To begin adding effects to our video, we'll click on Toggle Automation here. This will open a dropdown where we can select between a variety of effects. Let's start things off with Blur. Just like any other automation lane in Mixcraft, we can click to add a point, and then add more points of automation. So, we'll make this happen over the course of the crossfade. Let's play that back and see what we've got. Cool, but I think we could take this one step further by adding another effect layer. To do that, we'll click on the plus icon here to add another automation lane. Then, we can select another effect. Let's try the XOR invert. So, we'll go in and add some more automation points once again. And that should give us a bit more of an interesting transition. Pretty cool stuff. To finish this off, let's add some text to our video.
To begin adding text, we'll go to our video track and click on this plus icon here to show the children tracks. This will open a text track here. To begin adding text, we'll double click and then it will open the text editor window. Here we can enter some text. The text editor window has a variety of options. Let's kick things off in the bottom here by first changing our font. Then we could scale the font up to something a bit bigger. We can change the alignment here or in the text window, which we'll talk about in a moment. And we can adjust the color with the color button here. Let's change this to white. In this main window, you can resize the text window area so we could scale this up to fill the entire screen. Moving over here to the right hand side, we have a variety of controls. First up is the opacity tab, which allows us to adjust our text opacity and background opacity. To adjust this, all you need to do is click and drag the slider so we can make the text entirely see-through or not see-through at all. Next is the background control, which adds a background in this red windowed area. Let's bring this up to see what we've got. In this case, you can't see the text as the background is white. To adjust that, we'll go to the background color and we can go for a nice voltage modular red, hit OK, and there we go. If you don't want the background to overtake the entire video, you can drag down the opacity handle to add a nice colored overlay. Next up is the text window, which offers a few more controls for the text itself. Here we have the orientation controls, which allow us to justify the text. We can go left, center, or right in horizontal and vertical directions. Below that are the margins. So in this case, we have this text here and it's over to the left, but it's pretty close to the edge. So we can add a bit of spacing using the horizontal margin control here for just a bit of spacing. Another really cool control is the treating text as mask function. If we click this, the video comes through the text and then it's laid on a background. To adjust the background, we can change the mask color. Let's set this to white. And one other option is drop shadow, which adds a little bit of a drop shadow effect for some dimension and can make things a bit more readable. Next up is the fade tab, which allows us to add a fade animation. To enable this, you can simply check the box and adjust the fade length in milliseconds. And finally, we have the motion tab, which adds an animation to the start and end of the clip. In the type, you can choose between move and reveal. Let's use reveal and then change the direction. We'll use from the bottom and then we can set the duration. Next, let's add an animation to the end. We'll use the move, set this to top and adjust the duration once again. Now that we're done, we can hit OK. You'll see here that we've got our text clip and just like a video, we can click and drag to adjust the timing of everything. I want this to start roughly on this first kick drum and then we'll bring it back to end on another one right about here. Let's go back and take a look in our video preview window. One last feature you might want to know about is scrolling text, which is great for adding credits or creating karaoke videos or lyric videos. Adding scrolling text is actually pretty simple. In the text lane here, we'll right click and select add scrolling text. Just like the regular text window, you can enter your text here and adjust your font. Let's set this to match the font we've already used. Then we can adjust the size and the other controls with the opacity, text, and fade controls here. Let's set the color to be white, and then maybe add a bit of drop shadow so it'll be readable on this pretty bright background. Now we can hit OK. Just like the other text, we can click and drag to move it and click and drag the edges to resize it. With scrolling text, the length of the clip determines the speed of the scroll. So if we make this very short, you'll see this go flying by the screen. And if we lengthen this out, it'll take a longer time to go by. And that's really all there is to editing video in Mixcraft. Just like audio mixes, you can actually render this video and then share it online. Once you're happy with your video and you're ready to export it, you can go up to File, and then select Mix Down 2, and then select one of the available video codecs. Generally speaking, MP4 is a good way to go. From here, all you need to do is enter your file name, and then you can hit Save. If you'd like to adjust the video settings, you can go down here to Edit Details. The main control to know about here is the preset quality. You can adjust between a low quality and small file or a high quality large file. Generally speaking, it's best just to set this to 100% as long as you have enough space. If you have a deeper knowledge of video formats or need to render something specific, you can go to Specify Settings here and then click Settings and adjust all of the advanced settings from the dimensions, audio containers, and the advanced settings. In my case, I'm just going to use the preset quality at 100%, hit OK, and then select Save. 
At this point, you should have a good handle on how to edit video inside of Mixcraft, including using still images and videos, importing and linking audio, adding text, adding basic video effects, and exporting your videos. And that does it for this video, so thanks for watching.